Hey guys, uh, this video we're going to revisit my DOSzilla PC concept, which was a, a very fast, uh, pure MS-DOS machine that still had a 16-bit ISA slot for sound in it, and try to max out some of those really intensive, high-resolution DOS games. We're going to revisit that concept in today's video. We've got a new case, we've got the same motherboard, but we've got a much faster CPU, and a little bit of other little tweaks. So, uh, that's today's video. It's DOSzilla Returns. Laser discs and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. So, a couple months ago, I did a video called DOSzilla. And I wanted to make pretty much the fastest DOS, completely DOS based machine. I could put together uh, with a motherboard that also had a 16-bit ISA slot. And this was pretty much the fastest board I had. This is a server board from Tyan, and uh, it's socket uh, 462, or socket A. The fastest processor this board supported was a 1 GHz Thunderbird chip from AMD. Uh, so I did end up putting in a 1.4 GHz chip, which this board doesn't officially support, but it worked just fine. It was detected in the BIOS, and it's worked just fine ever since. But someone in the comments mentioned something, or at least I thought someone in the comments did, because going back to the comments section, I couldn't find the comments. So either it's in my head, or it disappeared, or some kind of YouTube silliness. But anyways, they suggested putting in a later Athlon XP with a Barton core. Uh, and that never really occurred to me, because that's a, the next generation up, I just... It just never crossed my mind that it might be compatible. But the more I thought about it, it should fit in the socket just fine. It uses the same socket, uses the same front side bus. The voltage is a little bit different. The uh, On a Barton XP chip, it's 1.6 volts, and this is a 1.75. But uh, looking around on the internet, a lot of people said with overclocking Bartons and stuff like that, that... 1.75, it should be safe. It's kind of the limit of what's safe to uh, put voltage into it, but it should still work fine with adequate cooling, which I think we have here. This is a decent cooler for this socket. So, uh, you know what? I think it might work, and I do happen to have one of these from my Athlon MP project, this single uh, Athlon MP uh, 2800 plus, which is the fastest of the Barton chips. Now, this is a server chip. It's for uh, you know multi-processor motherboards, but it should work just fine as a single processor. It's really not any different from a regular uh, Athlon. So, I'm going to try something crazy. I'm going to put this CPU into this socket motherboard and see if it works. Uh, honestly, I I don't think it will, but Let's see. I mean, if it does, it should be a really, a huge boost in speed. This is, I think, about 2.1 gigahertz as opposed to 1.4. This also has double the L2 cache. It's a newer architecture. It just, this should run much faster. Um, now we'd have quite a fast machine here while still maintaining the 16-bit uh, ISA slot. So, I don't know. This is just a fun project. Maybe everything will go up in flames. Who knows? But uh, let's find out. So, um, I put in the Barton uh, Athlon 2800 Plus. Uh, used some really good thermal paste on there. You know, clean the heat sink off and stuff. Put everything together, and uh, it works. So uh, there we go. AMD Athlon uh, 2.133. You know, 2133 megahertz. 133 times 16. Uh, it appears to be working. Um, yeah, I have a flop. I think, I don't know, there's been stuff. My friend had this machine for a while. He was goofing around with it, so I, maybe the floppy drive's not hooked up or something. But um, it appears to be working. That's not super hot or anything, but um, interesting. So uh, I guess I'll put things together here and see if it's stable, see if it 
continues to work. Um, nice. That's that's a big power boost to this this build. So we've got the return of Dosszilla. So for the video card, I wanted to do something slightly different. I wanted to go a little bit more than we did prior. Now, the video card I was using prior was basically the same as this. It was a Savage 4, and I went that route uh, simply because it was a little bit different, and the S3 Savage 4 chipset was supposedly, you know, very fast uh, for DOS and very compatible. It had kind of a reputation uh, for being really compatible in DOS. I, was, I wanted something like a newer card and a fast card, but I wanted something, I really wanted to focus on compatibility. Now the card I was using was, I believe it used the Pro chipset. There were different levels of that Savage 4 chipset. And the Pro, uh, Pro was decent, um, but I wanted to kick it up a notch. So I ended up finding this guy, and this is uses the Savage 4 Extreme chipset. That's uh, with a big X there. Uh, very extreme. Always extreme. Um, so anyways, yeah, it's a little bit difficult finding some of these extreme cards. Uh, the one I ended up finding was from number 9, and it uses a DVI connector. There are other ones uh, that just use a VGA connector. Um, but really, it's, it's pretty much the same chipset. Uh, the same card, except the speeds are bumped up a little. Now, the previous Pro uh, version of the Savage 4 card I was using, I believe it had a core speed and a memory speed of 125 megahertz. Now the Savage on paper uh, has a core clock speed and a memory clock speed of 166 megahertz. Although doing some testing in Powerbench and whatnot, it seems that the core speed on this card is 143 megahertz for the core clock speed and 153 megahertz for the memory speed, which is still uh, an improvement over that Pro chipset I was using earlier. Now I believe there is also a Pro Plus uh, chip for the Savage 4 that falls somewhere in between there. I believe it has 125 uh, megahertz for the core clock speed and something like 143 for the memory speed, but, but this is still faster than that. Uh, I'm not sure if the different versions of the Extreme, some maybe had slightly slower clock speeds, but this is still pretty decent, still beats out the uh, earlier card. Now, uh, seeing those numbers, I did want to absolutely be sure that this was an Extreme chipset. So, I did, uh, when I got this card, it actually came with a second identical card, and I decided to take the heatsink off that just to make sure, and as you can see, it is confirmed, it is the Savage 4 Extreme. No E! Go straight to the X. Extreme. So, yeah. So hopefully, maybe this will give us a little boost in some games. We'll see. But it should have the same excellent DOS compatibility. Alright, so now that we've confirmed the CPU is working and we've selected our video card, uh, we're ready to test some games with this setup. I'm keeping it very simple, just like the original DOSilla. Uh, really nothing has changed except the CPU, of course, and a slight uh, upgrade in speed with the video card. Uh, still using, I believe I used the same audio card last time on the ISA slot. It is an AW64, a uh, 4500. Should just work like an AW32 in DOS and a 40 gigabyte Western Digital. Of course, DOS is not seeing the whole 40 gigabytes, but uh, whatever. And um, just a floppy drive and a CD drive and the motherboard, and that's about it. So let's uh, look at some games, and let's compare with the original Dosszilla and see if the uh, new CPU and video card has made a difference. I'm pretty sure it did, but let's just see how much of a difference. Hey guys, so I wanted to take this opportunity with this video to do something a little bit different as far as uh, video capturing goes. Now, I know a lot of YouTubers use DOSBox. It's very easy, the video quality is great, but... Me and a couple other YouTubers and just people in general with streaming and stuff uh, like to use real hardware. We want to get capture from real hardware. And that can be a challenge sometimes. Even when you have good equipment, it can be a challenge. Uh, both with video quality and sound, just getting it working. And those, those low DOS resolutions uh, really can be a problem. And good equipment can be expensive. A good capture card can be well over $100. So uh, this little device came to my attention not too long ago and me and a couple other people have used this thing with uh, pretty pretty good results and uh, this is the Sewell Manta and this is a VGA to H uh, DMI converter and uh, this would be a fairly cheap way to capture 
real DOS footage, uh, sound and video. Now, uh, I bought this thing for about $30 on Amazon a few months ago. Uh, I think, I don't know if the supply has dried up or if the price has jumped any, but I still wanted to uh, show you guys this thing. And what it does, it takes your audio and your video, your VGA, say from a DOS machine, and then it outputs it through HDMI, the audio as well, and uh, it can output it at 720p or 1080p, and um, that's something that you know, an Avermedia card or something like that can understand. Now, of course, you'd still need a capture card like an Avermedia, but um, and the Avermedia card is a pretty decent card. Uh, I think there's probably a newer revision than the one I have, but it can't capture low resolutions. So this actually fixes that problem. Now, this isn't pixel perfect. Uh, I find the colors a little bit washed out. Uh, I've been using this in conjunction with OBS. Um, you know, it, it's not the best method uh, as far as, you know, your audio and video quality, but it's a cheaper method and it works. Uh, it's, I guess sometimes it's just good enough, but you guys can be the judge of that. So uh, all the video capture you're going to see in this video is done with this device uh, through the DOS machine, through DOSzilla, and uh, it converted through the HDMI and then fed into an Avermedia uh, card, PCIe Avermedia card. And uh, I think, I don't know, I'll probably be using OBS. Um, you can use OBS with the Avermedia card, or Avermedia's own software, but I'd probably be using OBS. And, um, yeah, you you be the judge on how well this thing works. Um, so, yeah, we have, just a real quick, this isn't really a device overview, but we have zoom, and then auto, and then this side it does require uh, power, and then you can set it to 720p or 1080p. I'm just going to have mine set to 720p. You do need a little power adapter. Um, USB and a power adapter. Now, I, like I said before, me and a couple other people have used this, and this thing has actually um, taken every resolution we've thrown at it. Old CGA games, uh, you know, like Sierra games, uh, CGA, EGA, VGA, and it has worked, and it has converted it uh, to 720p and 1080p. Now, again, in my opinion, the colors are a bit washed out, uh, not pixel perfect, but, you know, for you, it might be good enough. And uh, I'm also using that in conjunction with my VGA splitter. This is a fairly cheap VGA splitter, but it's always worked pretty well for me. Sometimes when I use this, uh, I get a black and white screen for whatever reason, but usually if I restart and then plug it in, it works for some reason. Uh, I have tried the Manta uh, straight to the Manta without the VGA splitter, and I still get kind of washed out colors and stuff, so it is this. It's not because I'm using a splitter, but uh, if you want a fairly cheap setup for, you know, pure DOS, um, you know, I, I've heard of people also using this on their HD TVs. I, I wouldn't go that route. I would just, of course, use a, just a straight VGA CRT, but that's me. I'm usually pretty old school with that stuff, but, I mean, it's possible, and like I said, last I checked, these were pretty cheap. Another thing to mention real quick, sometimes with that Manta, the image in your capture software will be off a little bit. That's what the auto button is. It like auto centers it. A couple of these clips, like when I look at Commander Keen, a little bit of the top I think is cut off. Sometimes I just forget to hit that and it goes off center. Um, anyways, let's look at some benchmarks and some uh, numbers here. We're comparing it with the original Dossilla that was running a 1.4 gigahertz Thunderbird chip. Uh, of course, Dossilla Returns is with that Savage Extreme card, and we're running a 2.133 gigahertz Barton core on XP chip. That's with the 512 uh, kilobytes of L2 cache. Okay, so let's look at some of these numbers here. Uh, the red is the original Dossilla. Uh, for such a bump, you would think these numbers would be higher. Uh, now, Dossilla Returns, the second Dossilla, does score higher across the board, uh, but not as much as you'd think, and I think the bottleneck is possibly our video card. Uh, so, 3D Bench, uh, 1.0C, uh, we see a jump of um, at least like 50 FPS, I think. That's just a benchmark, though. PCP bench, uh, just a 4 uh, FPS jump, not huge. Doom, we see a little bit of a jump. What is that, like 6 uh, Quake at 360 by 480. We do see a noticeable jump here by, I think, 20 FPS, 21 FPS. And then Quake at a higher resolution, which in general is getting higher frame rates, which seems counterintuitive, but uh, it gets a little bit of boost too 
uh, with the new setup at 640 by 480 but not as big as you think but again I think that's the video card holding us back you don't have to use the same card that I'm using here you don't have to use a Savage 4 uh, you could use something uh, faster and I I'd experiment that with that a little bit later in the video, but not a whole lot. But you could use throw in something like a GeForce FX card, and uh, that should get rid of some of the bottleneck. I, I didn't run the numbers for later cards, but you can get this thing faster with later cards. But keep in mind, it may affect compatibility. All right, so let's start off with something old just to check uh, compatibility. But we'll do Commander Keen. Uh, four. Now this game generally has problems with certain cards with uh, like jerky scrolling. As you can see with this machine, the scrolling is just fine. So uh, as you, you can see it's cut off a little bit at the top. That's my bad. I didn't center it on this clip. Uh, but let's uh, take a look at Commander Keen on this machine. Now I did run into this interesting error here where it gave me like an insufficient memory error and uh, then the background music, there was no background music after I got that error. It was all, uh, you know, you could sound effects like the gun shooting and the bouncing and collecting items but there was no background music. So, you know, this thing has a lot of memory in it for a DOS machine. I'm sure maybe there's something you could do or I, I didn't do Mem Maker, so I didn't like adjust my different kind of memories so that might have fixed the problem I only encountered it this that one time so here's Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition I always just like to throw this game in there kind of a later DOS era game uh, this game had no problems running at all and uh, yeah that's on the highest set it's on the SVGA I think the highest resolution that allows I forget what that is uh, 800 by 600 maybe I'm not sure Yes, 800 by 600. So this is high details 800 by 600, and it runs just fine. Come get some. Here's a later DOS era game. This is Redneck Rampage, the game that spawned outrage in the Redneck community when it was released. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't think anybody cared. But yeah, um, this isn't a real like taxing game, but it does support a really kind of high resolution. Uh, it supports uh, 1600 by 1200. That's the resolution you're seeing here. And uh, like I said, this isn't a real like taxing game. At least not the parts of it I played. Uh, but it, this machine handles it just fine. I had no problems whatsoever running uh, Redneck Rampage at uh, higher resolutions. So mix it up a little bit. Here's Stonekeep. Uh, this is a first-person sort of dungeon-crawling RPG game. Uh, I, I remember this game when it came out, this intro cinematic being a big deal and kind of hard to... I remember having a hard time running this game on uh, my machine, my DOS machine, when this... Not when this came out, like years later I got this game, but I just remember having a hard time getting it to run. This machine ran it without problems. I didn't have to tweak anything or do anything, it just ran it. Although if you listen, the sound isn't quite right. Uh, I don't know if that's because the speed or the sound card or both, but there's a lot of, I don't know what you call it, clipping at the end of like people's sentences and stuff. It, it actually sounded worse on my speakers than what you'll hear here, but... 
Oh no, the dog. The dog's gonna gonna die. Um, but yeah, Stonekeep. Alright, so here is the benchmark for Quake at 1280 by 1024 and uh, it's actually okay. I can tell the difference between this and the original DOSzilla. Although, in the end, uh, the benchmark, I think it only got like 8 or 9 FPS, but usually the benchmark isn't, you know, sometimes it's not the greatest judge of playability, and I'm using quotes there because I think playability can be subjective depending on the individual's tolerances, but let's look at some actual gameplay of Quake at this higher resolution. Alright, so I, I myself would definitely call this game playable with this resolution with this setup. Uh, not, you know, 30 or 60 FPS smooth, but, you know, I find it playable. Um, I can definitely tell the difference between this and the original Dosilla. The original Dosilla, this game at this resolution, uh, there were parts where, it, you know, it was very noticeably choppy. Here it's not so bad, uh, but... Yeah, I, I definitely do see an improvement between uh, the original Dosilla and this setup, Dosilla Returns, at uh, these higher resolutions. So one issue I did have with this uh, game is uh, when you go into the water, uh, the game crashes. So yeah, that's a big, uh, <laughs> that, I guess that's that makes it kind of unplayable. But yeah, as you can see here, as soon as you go into the water, it crashes. What if you don't necessarily care about the best compatibility? Maybe there's just a couple high-end demanding DOS games that you know, high resolution, you want to uh, get rid of that video bottleneck. Now, I just happen to have a FX5200 sitting around. Uh, by far not the fastest or most powerful card, uh, even if in its time it was kind of the low end uh, of graphics cards. But uh, for our purposes in this DOS machine, it um, may work out nice. So let's give it a try and see how it goes. So this is the benchmark for Quake, and we're going to see some gameplay, and this is using the FX5200 at the highest resolution, and I think the official benchmark score I got was like 24, 25 FPS. Not 30, but still a lot quicker and smoother than using the uh, S4 Savage, even the extreme version of that card. Uh, just a lot smoother, a lot better experience. So, yeah, you can throw in a later card. Again, I don't know how many games maybe this breaks with compatibility. I think the 52 or the FX line is still pretty compatible with older games. Uh, but like I said, the S, uh, the S3 cards are kind of legendary with compatibility with DOS. So that's that's why I went with one of their cards. But yeah, this the 5200 uh, FX seems to work uh, pretty good. Uh, remember, we've been using the Manta uh, upscaler, I guess it is, at the uh, resolutions like VGA to HDMI. And um, when you look at the specs for that car or that device, it doesn't list low resolutions, but obviously uh, it works. I, I think it, it does the job for the price. 
it's like I said, it's kind of blurry. Like text is is pretty bad. It, it but I think it's still a little step up from say S video. Uh, so you know, it is what it is. Uh, if you like the with the results you've seen here, pick one up. I'm pretty sure they're still easily available. I, I got mine on Amazon, but this was like four months ago, maybe. I just haven't really used it until now, but. Um, yeah, the game uh, runs fine with the FX card, um, except for one problem. Now, remember the water problem that the game would just go out if you jumped into the water? I think that has something to do with maybe the transparency effect. Now, you can get in the water as long as your like vision or your, your the water doesn't go above your head. Uh, if it goes above your head, it takes up your vision, the game will crash. I thought it might have something to do with con the transparency effect, and then I thought, well, maybe it's... Uh, issue relegated to the uh, the S4 cards, but no, it does it with this card too, so I'm not sure what's causing that. So what are my conclusions on Dosilla Returns? Well, uh, we certainly got some better numbers uh, in our benchmarks, and uh, in gameplay, the games did seem, you know, a bit more playable than before, which makes sense. We have a slightly faster video card and a much faster CPU going on here. But uh, overall, there were some downsides. It, it did feel like the system was a little less stable. I don't really remember getting any errors or issues coming up with uh, the original DOSzilla build, but this one, it just seemed to happen a little bit more. Not constantly, but, you know, Quake uh, gave me a couple issues. I don't know if it was maybe the intense CPU speed or the video cards I was using, but uh, especially when I jump into the water, it would give me some issues. I don't know if that had to do with the transparency effects or what. Um, it's weird, some memory issues that didn't happen to me before when I was playing Keen. So uh, just, just a, it seemed a little bit less stable. But overall, I did get better numbers with this machine. I'm really not, I, I don't think I can push this thing anymore. Uh, we could look at different video cards. Uh, the FX actually didn't do too bad. Uh, it was actually pretty compatible. It, uh, PCP Bench gave me weird video glitching that I didn't get with the uh, S, uh, the Savage 4 card. But other than that, that it seemed to work more or less uh, oh, just as well as the S3. Of course, I only tested a very, very small amount of games. Uh, if we start testing more and more games, I'm pretty sure the Savage 4 would probably come out on top as far as compatibility goes. The FX 5200 was also was also noticeably slower in uh, most of the benchmarks. It was just when we started bumping up the resolution that it, it started to become significantly faster. So there's still some things you can do with a machine like this. Uh, it was a fun project. It was worth doing. Uh, I'm glad I got to revisit it and try a faster CPU and really push... Uh, games with the FX5200 in there uh, and this new setup with the faster CPU actually Quake at the highest resolution uh, was actually somewhat playable. Uh, I would call it playable, but of course opinions vary. But um, yeah, it's it's an interesting project. So if you have the parts around, you want to try something like this, I'd say go ahead. Uh, so I'll see you next time and uh, thank you for watching.